On Tuesday, two investigation teams released their reports on MH17. The military manufacturer of the Russian Buk missiles, Almaz Ante, and the Dutch safety board made presentations concerning the aircraft brought down in eastern Ukraine last summer. A common point between Russian officials and Dutch investigators. The Russian Air Transport Agency has agreed that the airspace over war-torn eastern Ukraine should have been closed off for all civilian flights. And the Dutch safety board said the Ukrainian authorities knew about several military aircraft downed in that area but did not prevent air traffic from continuing through the region. In the month before the crash, at least 60 military airplanes and helicopters were shut down in the eastern part of Ukraine. The Ukrainian authorities were aware of this. They stated that occasionally weapon systems were used that could reach the cruising altitude of civil airliners. Yet, despite all this, Ukraine did not close its airspace. Both reports have concluded the aircraft was hit by a missile which hit the left side of the cockpit. However, there wasn't enough evidence for the Dutch safety board to conclusively locate the place of the launch. But the Russian military manufacturers concluded the missile was launched from a location called Zaroshinskaya. The investigation supposes the area was controlled by the Ukrainian army at the time and not by self-defense forces. And here are some of the crucial differences between the two reports. Both agree the plane was taken down by a Buk missile. However, Dutch safety board investigators say the missile was equipped with a new warhead. And Russian Almaz Ante discovered the warhead was an old one decommissioned by the Russian army in 2011. This type of shrapnel were discovered during our experiment. It wasn't found in the Boeing wreckage. The type of missile, if it was a Buk, is at 9M38 which is proven by the lack of the butterfly-shaped damage on the Boeing, while well, we witnessed a lot of it during our experiment. The last missile of this type was produced in the Soviet Union in 1986. With an expiry date of 25 years, any use after this time was prohibited and then decommissioned by the Russian army. A U.S. State Department spokesperson claimed the report did state MH17 was shot down from the territory held by self-defense forces. The report does not apportion blame or it say not. who was responsible. It does not. And yet, you, in, in, in the statement that, that you read earlier, said that you believe it supports your, your, your theory. Yes. How, how can it possibly support your theory if, if it doesn't? if it doesn't make a determination as to who actually did it. Because it, it does say that the, the, the MH17 was shot down by a Buk missile fired from separatist-controlled territory in eastern Ukraine. And we've said that from day one. Yeah, we checked what the actual report said on that matter. The area from which the possible flight paths of a 9M314M warhead carried on a 9M38 series missile as installed on the Buk surface-to-air missile system could have commenced is about 320 square kilometers in the east of Ukraine. Further forensic research is required to determine the launch location. Such work falls outside the mandate of the Dutch safety board. Well, our team's guy named Chichikan has more from the American capital, looking at where the U.S. could be sourcing its information from on MH17. It's not often on television that you see one person interviewed on two channels at the same time if the person is not a politician or a direct participant in the event of the day. Blogger Elliot Higgins is neither, but after the release of the Dutch investigation report on MH17, he was the go-to person for CNN and Sky News, which aired their interviews with Mr. Higgins at the same time. So why is he in demand? Unlike the Dutch investigators, he can say for certain who is to blame for the downing of the MH17. He says it's the rebels. Mr. Higgins showed where he thinks the missile that hit MH17 came from. Even though he's titled as a blogger and a citizen journalist, on these channels, Mr. Higgins speaks as an expert. But how did he become such an expert? 
chat rooms and comment threads on Arab Spring is where, upon his own admission, it all began. He was an unemployed finance and admin worker who searched for online videos from the Syrian conflict and focused his attention on the weapons used in the conflict. I didn't know much about weapons. I didn't know any Arabic. I didn't know much about Syria. What I had was a tremendous amount of information online. Mr. Higgins lives in the UK and has never been near a conflict zone. Last year, he started a website which claims to investigate current events using open source information such as online videos, maps, and pictures. So he took up the quote-unquote investigation of the downing of the MH17. This Tuesday, the Russian producer of the Buk missile that was likely used to shoot down the plane held a news conference answering journalists' questions. Mr. Higgins took to social media to discredit the manufacturer's findings. But he invited the question, who are you to offer expertise on the issue? German image forensics expert Jens Kriese compared the blogger's analysis to reading tea leaves. Mr. Kriese said, error level analysis is a method used by hobbyists. Mr. Higgins may be a great blogger and distributor of online videos, but since when did he become an expert? In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chakan.